302. Bronco Raptor. That means it's got a V. Oh, no, that's just, that's a little misleading. That's not really a V8. So let's just start there because that's what everybody's going to talk about. That's what everybody's concerned about. It does not have a V8. I'm going to tell you it doesn't need a V8. We'll get into that in a minute. It also doesn't have the 3.5 liter Eco Beast, which we love in every application. What it has is a three liter, which is a board and stroke 2.7 liter, based on the 2.7 liter nanotechnology or architecture, which we've loved in everything it's been in. Also, unlike the 2.7, it does not have port injection to go along with the direct injection. It looks like it's direct injection only. Now, why did they do that? Why did we knock the 3.5 or the five liter? Basically, it's this simple. This is on the Ranger platform and the Ranger assembly line along with the Bronco assembly line. And it's a just little narrower frame and the 3.5 with all its plumbing wouldn't fit. Also, it's not on the same assembly line as the 2.7 and the three liter and all that fun stuff. They claim maybe the 5.0 would have fit, but they didn't, they wanted more low end grunt. That's what the Ford performance engineers wanted. So what kind of grunt are we getting here? We're getting 418 horsepower at 5,650 RPM and 440 foot pound of torque at 3,500 RPM. So not a problem there. No slouch, zero to 60 in sub six and almost sub six on dirt. So depending on where you're at on that, check out our off-road video to see those actual numbers. Basically what Ford Performance did is lots of magic. They took the same three liter twin turbo V6 that's in the Ford, uh, not Escape, Ford Explorer. And before they put it in here, they added lots of things for cooling and airflow. And oh, by the way, it has its own specific turbos in this application to help with all that. One of the other magical tricks they did, because as you know, with any turbo, we get a lot of peak power, but then it falls off. And then we have some turbo lag. If we're on Baja rally mode, we want to keep some, some turbo going. This has some anti-lag features, especially in Baja mode, where there's no drop off in power application. And it is a joy to drive. It's paired to a 10 speed auto, which mm, I would say is a little clunky. Um, but it does work great when you're in sport mode or Baja mode and all, all that fun stuff. No problems with it. It's just not the most refined and smoothest application. But my brother begs to differ in our check out our review to see where we talk about that a little bit more. Um, last but not least, it has true dual exhaust. And that might be the best thing. Just like the F-150 Raptor, you can put it in Baja mode and annoy your neighbors in off-road mode only. And it sounds kind of fun. It sounds different than the 3.5. The 3.5 to me is a little more VQ sounding. This is a little more raspy and a little different, but it's fun in its own way. So that's a lot of fun. Now it's also connected to a bunch of cool driveline features and suspension goodies. Brian's going to dig into that. So let's throw it over to him. All right, boys and girls, it's time for the nuts and bolts, which is the freaking best part of this thing. Let's start with the rubber, Craig. Roll it in. Jesus, the wheels. Where'd you go? This is a, uh, hi, this is a 37 inch tall tire. It's actually a 37 by 12.5 by 17. This is not a millimeters, it's in inches. That's how gnarly this thing is. Of course, it's a KO2, and of course, we freaking love it. It's got the mountain peak, uh, twin peak, triple peak, whatever. It's good for everything, and it's quiet, quiet, quiet on the highway. That's a big deal. Now, part of the reason this thing rides and drives as well as it does is you see that gap right there? That's five inches. There's another five on the bottom. That gives you 10 inches of sidewall when you're rolling. 37 inch tire with a 17 inch wheel. You do the math. That is a uh, good place to be. It rides great, I think. Craig and I disagree on this a little bit. In his neighborhood and his rough roads, not quite so much. But everywhere else where I took it, I was really impressed with the ride and drive of this thing. Let's hop right to the mechanics of this thing. Up front, double wishbone suspension, just like on the regular Bronco, Ranger, and F-150. This shares the platform with the Ranger and the regular Bronco. What is different here is you have a beefy cast aluminum lower control arm, just like the F-150 Raptor has, and then you have an increased travel for the Fox live valve suspension. The mount for this thing is higher up than the regular Bronco is. And it's, you look in here, it's the first thing you see, you can tell that it is that way. Brakes, they are huge for a 17 inch wheel. They are 350 millimeters tall by 34 wide. That right there is all about heat absorption. With a 17 inch wheel, you can only get so big with the rotor itself. That thickness in the rotor allows heat to dissipate throughout it. They are also big in the rear. They're a little bit smaller to fit the parking brake. 336 by 20, and they're vented on all four corners. 
really happy with that. Something else you get on this thing are beefier axles. Up front, you have a Dana 44, and in the back, you have a Dana 50. It's an M210 carrier size in the front from Dana Spicer, and an M235, which comes out to 9.3 inches of carrier um, gear size. Now, for those that have been following drag racing since the dawn of time, the Ford 9 inch is the benchmark. 9 inch refers to the size of that, that ring and pinion. This one is bigger. That is really impressive. In a semi floating design, it is meant to take anything you can throw at it from the factory. It is a locking diff front and rear. They are electronically locking and on the fly, you just hit them. And there's no nannies, there's no nonsense. You just hit them when you need them, you go for it. Something you do have here are adjustable drive modes. There's a bunch of them. We'll talk more about that in the drive video that we have out as well, but I'll just put it really short and sweet here. Baja mode is what's unique to this. Um, it's not the same as the Baja mode you get on the wild track or the other Broncos that you've seen. This has actual anti-lag that comes into play when you're in that mode. Also, with the 10 speed and the low range gearbox, it crawls incredibly. We put it in four low, we did an off-road video with it, and I was riding the brake the entire time because it wanted to just roll over everything. It did a good job with that. What do you get suspension-wise? We've already covered a little bit with the live valve. This is the Haas 4.0 Fox live valve suspension. What that means is that it is checking ride height on every corner at all times. It's incredible. That's part of why it rides and handles as well as it does. Now it is a laugh to put in off-road mode and drive it on the street because nosedive is profound. So if you look at how long this stroke is, I'm gonna show a clip of this. The bump stop has a long way to go. This is at full droop and this wheel can tuck up in this fender. Really quite impressive. Out back, we still have a five link suspension. The difference here is gonna be that the lower trailing arm is a lot beefier on this than you find on the regular Bronco. The regular Bronco is usually just like a straight beam. This is a lot longer and it has a gusseting going through it to give it a lot more strength for all those impacts and actually acts as a slider if you're going over obstacles. As far as suspension travel is concerned, it's exactly the same as the F-150 Raptor. It's 13 inches in the front, 14 in the rear. That is a ton. Let's talk about the angles. Approach angle is a massive 47.2, breakover is 30.8, and departure is 40.5. You can just roll up to an obstacle and then just keep going over it. There's no problem there, and that's what you see right here. That thing is awesome, especially when the tire's mounted up. It's a big deal. Something else you get here, and really this is what the Haas 4.0 consists of, and that's this tire rod right here. You may have seen on the internet a few of these breaking for those that have the base Broncos and the uh, non haas suspension broncos this connecting rod right here with a tire that's bigger it just gives up it toothpicks and it snaps not gonna be a problem here it's cast aluminum goes all the way up the threads it'd be really hard to break that thing and that's the raptor bits that you get you're really gonna never have a problem there and that is incredible something else you have is the disconnecting stay bar not sway bar but stay bar. I'm sure there's a patent copyright problem there. Ford wants to be cute and call it a stay bar. What that means is that this thing right here, unlike its competitors, it's hydraulically controlled, which means you can be on an obstacle. And I can't imagine ever getting a tire off the ground with this because it droops so much. But if it were to, you can disconnect that sway bar by releasing hydraulic fluid and it just whoosh, comes right down. And what that does is it gives you more droop in the suspension and more flex in the suspension. And that's why independent front suspension works totally fine. You don't need a stick axle on modern off-roaders. I get it, it's a Jeep thing, and it is great for rock crawling, but the rest of the time it's not so great. That's why Ford chose this. So, all that covered. Thank you for watching our technical brief. Please stay tuned and check out our off-road video, our road test. We also do 060 in dirt and on pavement with this thing. See you next time.